This is 2019 Junior Cert Paper 1, which you had two and a half hours to complete. So I'll do it in three stages in this video. Question one to question four. So question one, 85 students in third year in Leem School and two fifths do business studies. So they're testing, you're gonna read the question carefully. Work out the number that do not do business studies. So two fifths times 85, if you wanna start it that way or you can get three fifths straight away. Two fifths of 85, you're gonna type it into your calculator. In the old days when you didn't have calculator, you'd have to say 85 divided by five is 17 times two is 34. So 85 minus 34 is 51. Do not do business studies. You can see the marks available here. I'll put in the margin of these questions. So obviously three fifths of 85 will give 51 as well. I may do it multiple ways in the questions just to show you different ways. 26 of the students in third year do art. Work out the percentage of students in third year who do art. Correct one decimal place. There are 85 students in third year. Go back and read the car question carefully. So 26 do art. 26 out of 85 do art. How do you get percentages? You did it in primary school. Multiply by, and everything says 100 over 1, but you can just write 100. Type it into your calculator. Make sure it looks the same. And we always look down to see what do they want. They want one decimal place. You can write down 2 and round it off, or you can just write down 1. It says 30.588 on my calculator. 30.58. Correct one decimal place, 30.58. Point six, and that's percentage. So put in the percentage symbol. Move on to question two. Maybe before we do, just look. Suggested time five minutes. This has taken two, so you have loads of time in the exam. Take your time. Read the question twice. Don't rush through it just because it's a sunny day and you want to get outside. And part C actually before question two. The ratio of students to teachers in Liam's school was 15 to 1. This school hired one extra teacher. What's going to happen to the class sizes? If they divided them up, there would be less in each class, wouldn't there? So the ratio of students to teachers was 8 to 1. So they're trying to confuse you here with this 8 to 1. But it was 15 to 1. It could be 14 to 1 now. It doesn't really matter what number. We're just looking for an inequality here. Is A greater than 15? Well, no, it's going to have to be less than 15. It's not equal to 15. This one here, less than 15. Tick the box. Nice and easy. Question one finished. Only if you haven't read the question carefully. It says give an example to support your answer. So if we just make up a number of students, uh, well, we... If it's 15 teachers, sorry, 15 students to one teacher, it could be 30 students to two teachers. If we multiply both of those by 10, it could be 300 students to 20 teachers. So now we're going to have 21 students, teachers, excuse me, we're still going to have 300 students. Something along these lines will work. We could have the same 30 students one extra teacher would be three so because we don't know there's many correct answers here so here's examples to support your answer question two they're suggesting 10 minutes write down the four factors of 45 apart from one and 45 so there's a bit of rough work we can use here one by 45 write it down and then see what well, two doesn't go in three goes in 15 times you can check it on your calculator four doesn't go in or five has to go in and ends in five five by nine and then six doesn't go in seven doesn't go in eight doesn't go in and we're back above nine so we have all the factors here they are so good maths do it. a little bit of work down here and then put the answers back in three five nine 
and 15. The marks are now visible on the side. Part B, N is a whole number bigger than one. It has just two factors. You should be immediately thinking prime numbers. One and N, but you can see they continue on this sentence. Put a tick in the correct box to show which name is given to this type of number. Composite prime or square. Prime number only has two factors. And then part C, P is a whole number. So you need to be good at reading for this exam. Apart from one and P, the only other factor that P has is seven. Work out the value of P. You could do a bit of trial and error here, start guessing if you so wish. So we write down one, seven, and P. Let me just think about this. Seven has to divide in if it's a factor. It will also divide into this number here. And if it only has one factor, well, is it, what about seven squared, 49? So the number 49 looks like it works for us. One, seven, and 49 would be the only factors. So they're looking at prime numbers, had two factors up above. What about these? numbers here if we take the next square number seven let's say eight because it's even it's going to have a lot of factors you can see does nine have a similar amount of factors 81 no it has three as well as a factor so not a visible pattern that jumps out here just a bit of trial and error to get you to the answer Part D, we're asked to write down the four factors of 12k plus 8. I think a lot of students would get quite confused by that one. Apart from 1 and 12k plus 8. Well, factors, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with numbers that can divide in. So 12k plus 8, we can factorize to be 2 times 6k plus 4. We can also take 4 out and say 4 times 3k plus 2. Can we make any other factor out that will divide into 8 and 12? No, just 2 and 4. So 2 is definitely a factor. 4 is definitely a factor because they both divide into 12k plus 8. So anything that divides in is a factor. Like 1, 7 and 49 all divide into the number 49. 3 divides into 9 and 81. So the factors here look like they're 2, 4, 6k plus 4, doesn't ask for any particular order, 6k plus 4, not 2, and 3k plus 2. Quite a tricky question for junior search, so 10 minutes you were given for that one, you would maybe do a bit of trial and error on rough work and come back to this question if you weren't absolutely sure before you put your answers in. So you're going to try and use these revision videos in the couple of weeks before the exam to maybe get a bit of exam technique. Practice these questions by trying to follow what I'm telling you. Rough work paper. Don't always jump in with an answer straight away. You have loads of time, a lot more time than you think. Question three. The distance between Earth and Mars is at least 56,000. No. 56 million kilometers six zeros write this distance in the form a by 10 to the power of n kilometers oh, apologies for the helicopter up above going into Bournemouth hospital but this is a scientific notation question which you can all see straight away so what are we doing we're moving the decimal and our number has to be between 1 and 10 as always so it's going to have to be 5.6 from the 56 million. So let's just write 56 million out nice and big. This is what you're going to do in an exam. Where was the decimal? It was here. Where has it moved to? It's jumped three places. It's jumped another three places. And then it's jumped another one. So it's jumped seven places. So we'd have to multiply this one by a 10 with seven zeros to put it back in its original position. 5.6 by 10 to the power of 7. 
This question had 10 marks for part A and B given together. So they were quite generous if you got one of them right. This one here, we're moving the decimal in the opposite direction. It's exactly the same question. Centimeters just changed. It's definitely centimeters and centimeters. Saying n is an element of z. So it's kind of giving you a clue here that it's negative. So we're moving the decimal 0.0075. You're going to be able to write it bigger than it's given here. So we're going to have to move it into here, into that place, 7.5. We're going to move it, we can jump three places. So 7.5 is too big. So we'd have to go back three places by 10 to the power of minus 3. Part C of this question, worth 5 marks, is from the Road Safety Authority. Lewis was driving at 90 kilometers per hour when he sneezed. During this sneeze, his eyes closed for half a second. You're thinking to yourself, how are we going to work this out? How many meters did he travel in this time? Okay, so 90 kilometers per hour, and we're asked for meters. So the first thing you should be doing is just looking for the units, meters, kilometers. So write out the question again, 90 kilometers. Let's see how many meters that's equal to. 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. So 90 kilometers would have to be 90,000. You can see here, we're doing a bit of rough work off to the side just to help ourselves with the question. We don't have to straight jump into the answer. So that's 90,000 meters. So he's traveling at 90,000 meters per hour. So we can get this down into seconds now. We divide it by 60, 90,000 divided by 60. Oh, that gives us 90 divided by 60, so knock off a zero. 9,000 divided by 6 is going to be 1,500, excuse me. That would be 1,500 meters. Hours divided by 60 will be in minutes, so he's traveling 1,500 meters a minute. So 1,500, you could always do this in one step. I'm just showing you the long way, and you can see you've loads of time, so no harm to write out step by step in the exam. Take your time. 1500 divided by 60 is 150 divided by 6, which is 25 meters per second. So when you close your eyes for one second, your car has traveled 25 meters. So in half a second, is that what they asked? You can sneeze for half a second. Half a second, I'd write it out like this, is equal to 25 divided by 2, 12.5 meters distance traveled by the car. Don't sneeze too much when you're driving. Question four is the income tax question. Katie has gross annual income of 52,460. Write it down, 52,460, nice and big. 8.5% is deducted in pension contributions. The amount that is left is Katie's taxable income. Okay, let's multiply by 0 0.085, or when we're looking for a taxable income, we could multiply 52,460 by what will be left, which will be 91.5%, 915, you can see if you add those two together, you get 100%. So this is the quick way to do it, get 91.5%, 52,460, so that's gonna give 48000, nearly 48,000 exactly, 48000.90. Maybe they should have worked this out exactly, but not to worry, we'll deal with the point 90. So that's her taxable income. So 10 marks for that and 10 minutes for the overall question. So this was worth 35 overall of the 300, so a little over 10%. Katie pays income tax on her taxable income at a rate of 20% on the first 34. And 40% on the balance. And she has tax credits. So we're asked to work out her net income after income tax. So I've shown you a way to lay this out. You take the standard cutoff, which is what they used to call it. They'd now just say the first, but 34,000. So I'm going to do it here. We pay income tax at a rate of 20%. So a fifth of 30, 6,000, and a fifth of 400. It's going to give me. 6,800 at the lower rate of tax 
and then what's left well the difference between these two numbers so if you line them up beside each other you can see that there is going to be so i'm just going to put it beside the correct number not the fifty-two thousand. you can see there's going to be fourteen thousand left point nine fourteen oh 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 that will be the 48 point 90 i like writing two decimals when i'm dealing with money that's going to be the higher rate of tax at 40 percent of the balance at the higher rate not point four zero so these two numbers give me my my gross tax before we take off the tax credits and this is giving me five six oh oh thirty six five six oh oh thirty six and then i told you to lay it out this way and then add these two numbers together and you're going to get 11 and 1 4 so you're going to get 12,400.36 and we'll run that around a little bit but we'll be able to fit it in and then we take away the tax credits which are 4200 so i explained it in class the government really are going to take this off you but then they're going to be really kind and give you some back so it reduces don't add it on we take away 4200 and we write the answer down here it's going to be 8000 200.36 so that's how much our net tax is going to be net tax so net income which is what we're asked to work out in part two we have loads of room on the paper for this the net income is going to be the 48,000.90 90 minus the 8200.36 so 90 minus 36 is 54 so i'll just write the answer up here for part b so i don't have to move off the screen we're going to take 8000 so it's going to be 39,800 39,800 i should probably just use a calculator 39,854 cent the answer for 10 marks for part two so these income tax questions a lot of calculator use a lot of the time they leave out either this number or maybe this number and if you lay it out this way you can always just work your way backwards by doing the opposite of what you do when you're going forwards or downwards so be ready for this in 2022 income tax question is a guarantee in part b Katie got a credit card bill three months ago for 420. You write out your 420. What's going to happen with this 420? The interest rate was 2% per month, compounded monthly. And she has not paid off any of her bill. Work out what her bill is now. So it's going up. So if you know the good way to do this, we take one, add the interest rate on 2%. And if it was one month, it would be to the power of one, two months will be to the power of two three months will be to the power of three four months will be to the power of four 12 months will be to the power of 12 and so on so just read the question carefully three months ago so to the power of three and this question's calculator use only when you know the rules or you just keep adding two percent on and multiplying by 1.02 each time put 420 by 1.02 to the power of three type it into your calculator twice and make sure that you get 445.71 so the road safety authority and now don't get credit cards so you're being warned throughout this test of how not to behave katie bought a motorbike oh here we go she bought a motorbike don't buy a motorbike either they're extremely dangerous since she bought it it lost 10 percent of its value value of the motorbike is now 12150 how much was it when she bought it some more calculator use what's 12150 equal to 90 percent of its value you could write that down straight away so we could divide that by nine to get 10 percent and multiply by 10 if we didn't have a calculator which that's what i'll do i'll divide by nine to get one remainder three so that's in primary school three nines are 27 remainder four so one three five out nine into forty five goes five times times ten is equal to thirteen thousand eight 
thousand five hundred. That's much the motorbike cost. You could just double check your answer here by multiplying thirteen thousand five hundred by zero point nine, and you will get twelve point five zero. Or if you multiply thirteen thousand five hundred by ten percent, you get one three five zero, which will be the value that it's lost, bringing it down to twelve one five zero. So get practicing these four questions and then move on to the next video. You can see they took 20 minutes, but in an exam, you're going to have 150 minutes for the whole thing. If you were sitting it in 2019, in 2022, you probably had a little bit longer. So you've loads of times to work your way, loads of time to work your way through these questions. Get practicing 